the once great empire of Spain had from the aftermath of Napoleon's Peninsula War become a broken country, with French occupation destroying her institutions and economic fabric. By the end of the 19th century, Spain, once the largest colonial empire in the world, was a country relegated to the sidelines of Europe. Her defeat by the US in 1898, bringing an end to the last glimmers of imperial splendor. A crucial element which would later lead to overwhelming support for a rebirth of traditional Spanish ideals. King Alfonso XIII was an unpopular king during the early 20th century, and his ill-fated war on Morocco further heightened the hostility displayed towards him by the general population. This was exploited by Miaguo Primo de Rivera, who on the 15th of September 1923 launched a military coup and overthrew the existing government. He ruled the country in a military dictatorship until the Great Depression hit in 1929 when Nisido Alcala Zamaro took over as the president of Spain, due to Primo de Rivera stepping down. Due to more civil unrest and increasing pressure from both right and left-wing groups for democratic elections within the country, King Alfonso XIII allowed the democratic elections in Spain and stepped down as reigning monarch of Spain in April of 1931. The then local liberal government became the second republic and took control of the country this flicker of a fair democratic society soon died, with the aftermath of the Great Depression significantly hitting Spain. The poor lay starving on the street as the government ran out of money and jobs soon became scarce. CEDA, a right-wing Catholic group, won the next election in 1933 and rolled back many of the changes made by the previous government. The left-wing groups such as CNT, or the National Confederation of Labour, countered with strikes which were vigorously shut down by the army. Farm workers wages were cut in half and any of those who identified as republicans were removed from the armed forces, deepening political divisions. These political divisions resulted with intense reactions from both the right and left wings of the country. However, in 1936, power swung back to the left with the Popular Front, a broad coalition of liberal and socialist groups, won a parliamentary majority. The political divide quickly became a chasm. The right, consisting of the military, conservatives, the Catholic Church and the elite, feared for the very survival of Spain, belief that Spain was under the threat of becoming a communist nation. On March 8, 1936, a secretive meeting of officers in Madrid came together, including General at the time Francisco Franco, to discuss a military coup to be heeded by General Sanjuro. The final straw was on July 12th, 1936. It was on this night that there was the murder of Lieutenant Jose Castillo Seria by Flangist gunmen in Madrid. In response to this, monarchist leader Jose Calvo Sotelo was murdered. Important members of both right-wing and left-wing groups had been killed. It was clear that the country's troubles could only end with violence, inevitably resulting in the bloody conflict of the Spanish Civil War. In 1936, civil war erupted in Spain. It was exceptionally vicious, setting family against family, communist against fascist, believers against atheists. The rising tide of fascist ideals in Spain did not go by unnoticed, with Duque of Italy, Benito Mussolini, and the Fuhrer of Germany, Adolf Hitler, pledging their support for Franco and his forces, supplying the nationalists with weapons, aircraft, and vehicles. On July 17, 1936, the units of the army fighting guerrillas in Spain's colony in Morocco mutinied. The next day, Franco flew to join them, proclaiming a new nationalist movement, which would save Spain from communism. The Popular Front responded by calling for volunteers to defend the Republic. The battle lines had been drawn. With Franco's Army of Africa trapped in Morocco by the Republican Navy, 
Franco now turned to the one man who he thought would help, Adolf Hitler. Hitler sent his Condor Legion, with its ultra-new fighters and bombers, to Morocco to transport Franco's forces to mainland Spain and help aid the nationalist movement. The West, sensing the possibility of an impending war, proclaimed a policy of non-intervention with the countries of Britain, France and the United States, refusing to support either the left-wing or right-wing groups in the country. As I am opposed to Ironically though, seeing as Italy and Germany, who were signed with the non-intervention policy, were still supplying arms and support to the nationalists, Joseph Stalin, the Soviet leader, announced that he would help the Republic. Stalin's worry was the rise of fascism in Germany. Stalin saw the Spanish conflict as a way of keeping Germany and Italy occupied while building up the Soviet Union's military strength. Tanks, fighter aircraft and military advisors were sent to support the Republicans' effort. Yet, this support wavered insignificant compared to the support given to Franco's nationalists. Although, the most support did not come from a country alone, but from the international brigades, which supplied approximately 30,000 troops to the Republic. With Franco's army and outside support by Italy and Germany, the nationalists were able to envelop Madrid, with nationalist forces pushing from the north, south and west, surrounding the east of Spain and practically putting Madrid under siege. On November 7, 1936, the official attempt to gain control of Madrid began and lasted until mid-January 1937, when the nationalist forces gave up. The fighting was intense and often came with appalling treatment of civilians. Republicans murdered Catholic priests and nationalists began murdering any accused of being communist. Nationalist air power was used indiscriminately against civilian targets, with Madrid being heavily bombed. Both sides lost about 15,000 men, and no further attempts were made by the nationalists to take over Madrid. Instead, they planned to circle and control the city's surroundings. Madrid wouldn't be taken over by the nationalists until it was surrendered at the end of the war. The already weakened Republic soon faced more difficulty with conflict from within their own units. The socialists and communists of the Republic came under attack by the more idealistic anarchists who believed the war to be an opportunity for a mass revolution by the workers. These disagreements burst out into the open in May 1937, with fighting breaking out between the anarchists and communists, resulting in a fatal weakening of the Republican cause. The small area controlled by Republican forces soon dwindled in size, with the undertrained fighters no match for the nationalists' professional fighters and the combined German and Italian support. On July 24, 1938, the Republicans, in an effort to turn the tide of the war, organized a surprise attack on the area of Ebro. Waiting until midnight to cross the Ebro River, fierce fighting came from the Republicans, with the nationalists caught off guard. Republicans surrounded the nationalist forces, going from door to door and securing the area, resulting in a huge success for Republican forces. However, Franco was quick to respond and sent in units from all over to defend their lines. By August, the nationalists had the Republicans surrounded, with supplies being cut off, and on November the 18th, with the Republican forces in the area exhausted, Franco took back the lost territory, pushing Republican forces back and destroying the morale of those who opposed his army. With savage fighting ensuing between the two opposing forces, the Republicans had now dwindled in size, resulting to a purely defensive standpoint, which would stay the same for the rest of the war. The Savage Battle of Ebro was the most deadly battle of not only the Spanish Civil War, but in the entirety of Spanish history, with an estimated 170,000 dead. By the start of 1939, the Nationalists had penned the Republicans into a small enclave around Barcelona, and another stretching eastward from Madrid to the coast. Having cut the Republican forces in two, Nationalists now launched an offensive on the territory of Barcelona. The attack on the Republican defence line was made by six Nationalist armies, who organised a pincer move on the already exhausted Republican forces. The Republicans in Barcelona surrendering on 26th of January, the last token of resistance to fascism in Spain, coming to a close. However, Madrid continued to hold out, but the international brigades were drawn out. 
more and more nations began to recognize Franco's government as his forces closed in for the final assault on Madrid. In the end of March 1939, its defenders exhausted, after more than three years of fighting, the capital surrendered to Franco. A month later, Franco formally declared hostilities to an end, ending a war that had cost more than 750,000 deaths and the displacement of hundreds of thousands of families. Francisco Franco, now in power of the country, made Catholicism the only legal and tolerated religion, banned almost all other languages outside the country, forbid Catalan and Basque names for newborns, banned labor unions, and created a vast secret police network to spy on his citizens. At this point, many structural points of Spain had fallen, including the economy, with such things as foreign exchange and gold reserves almost completely depleted. On November 20th, 1975, Francisco Franco died in Madrid after a series of heart attacks while also fighting with Parkinson's disease. The first post-Franco elections were held in June 1977 and Spain has remained democratic ever since. The Spanish Civil War completely changed Spanish society, setting brother against brother and destroyed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. The scars of Spain's Civil War took years to heal, and in some ways they never have.